So this tutorial is on creating a design from scratch. Um, now my suggestion always is to start with templates, uh, which you'll find down here and there's lots of different kind of templates uh, and there's this drop down menu. And you generally find what you're looking for and then in the next tutorial I'm going to do, um, I'll show you how all these can be easily edited to what you're actually looking for if they don't quite match up to it. But for now I'm um, I am just going to um, design one from scratch so, so you know and can see how kind of easy it is. So the first thing is the concept. So let's say you shoot for the product, which I, I hope you all do, and one of the first double pair spreads that you will be thinking of is the bridal prep shots. Now unfortunately I haven't got any bridal prep shots, I've got some beautiful images from Andrew Younger, but um, uh, you'll get the idea even if they're not the correct images for what I'm explaining. So we've got a blank double pair spread and we're going to design the bridal prep shot and in my imagination I'm seeing four small images running down the right hand side of the screen here with a big double page spread bridal shot portrait behind it and then I'm going to show you how to add an image onto this side as well for a technical reason and I'll explain once we get to it. So as I say just bear with me that these images aren't quite the ones that I'm, I'm looking for such as the bridal prep shots but you kind of understand. So the first thing to deal with is, is getting four images or so smaller images down here so the first thing to do is drag one image up. Now there's with any software there's five or six ways to do anything. Um, so I'm going to kind of roughly size it um, to the right size and then I can actually copy and paste the dimensions of this um, to a, another image on the screen if I want to. But just through knowing the software quite well I know there's an easier way to do it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy the image and then paste another one, paste another one and paste another one. So now in total we've got four images. So I'm not going to worry about alignment, I'm not going to worry about that it's the same image, I'm just kind of going to get them onto the screen. So there we go. So what I'm going to do now is going to kind of get the alignments correct and get the spacings correct. So what, to do that and the way that our alignment tool works is all I need to worry about is where the edge of the image finishes in relation to the edge of the page. So I can bleed this image all the way to the edge of the page if I want to, but just for the purposes of my demo, I'm going to leave it as it is um, and leave it right sat on the safety margin there. And so that's the first image, and I also have to look at the last image. So the first and the last image is the ones that are important. So the reason for that is when we use our justification tool or alignment tool or spacing tool, it looks at the last one or the first one, looks at the last one and then divides the space uh, to give us an average in between everything else. So the, the way to do this is to select one image, hold down the shift key on the keyboard, select the second, the third and the fourth image. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the spacings correct. And over on the toolbar on the left hand side here, it says distri distribute the spacing between the images. So I'll just let me move this palette over so you can see. So we're going to do the vertical spacing, so hit that button there and the vertical spaces are now, all now equal between the first and the last one. The next one is to align them all in one uh, way, which is the button above it. So I'm going to align the horizontal centers. So they're all aligned, and because they're still kind of connected together with the red bounding box, I can move them all at one go into position like that. And then it's just a matter of putting the correct images in. So then I just simply drag and drop the correct images of the um, bridle prep shots into place like that. So that's our four images done. The next is our double page spread, uh, the, the bridal shot. Uh, so I'm going to use this one here. So I drag it up onto the screen again. Here it is. And I'm going to make it a double page spread, which is really simple. We've got two buttons on the left hand side, one that says fit selected image to single page, and the next one says double page. Well, as you can see, the image has kind of overlaid the other images, and it's a little bit like layers in Photoshop, so we just have to arrange them slightly different by selecting this image and oops, uh, by, by double clicking on it you'll get a one to one of it by the way um, by select, making sure it's selected and then sending it to the back so you get the other images come through now this is kind of still a very powerful and strong image so I'm going to reduce the opacity of it just to kind of bring the image down um, and I'm also going to make it black and white but what the interesting thing that's happened is by reducing the opacity, we're making the image more transparent. So whatever's behind the image is coming through. So in this case, it's white paper. If I change the paper color behind the image, so the base page is actually giving us a, a, a completely different effect. And we can also tone the pages by doing that. But just for now, I'm going to kind of leave it 
with white pages underneath. Okay, so that's that. The next thing is putting an image over here. Now, generally, what people do is they'll grab a landscape image, they'll bring it up on the screen, and they want to place it here, which you kind of think you would do that and then let go. But this is what happens the image drops through like that, and in this case, that's not what we want to happen. So, I'm just going to go back to the image. Uh, when I drag the image up, just before I let go of the image, I just hold down the shift key on the keyboard and it'll just drop it into position like that. So it doesn't drop through. Now, I want to put this in the center. You can see that when I'm moving it, I'm getting these red lines. Red lines means I'm aligned to the page. The blue lines that you see called smart guides are aligned to another image. Uh, this one being the center of the one on the right. Um, but there is an easier way to do it again. There's a button over here that I can press that says put it in the center of the page. So it's now banging the center. But when I come to resize the image now, you'll see that it's no longer in the center of the page. So here's another little tip for you. Once I've put an image in the center, if I now press the Alt key on the keyboard, I can resize the image and it anchors it in the center. So it doesn't matter what I do to it, it's going to be in the center. So that's how we center the image up. Now I'm going to apply a, a stroke line or a border, as we call it in Graphic Studio terms, to this image. So to do that, I make sure the image is selected. I go to Border and I can move the border thickness button to whatever I want it to be. So four is quite big, three, two, one. So how do I get it less than one? Because a lot of our preset templates are like less than one. How do we do that? Well, you just simply type into the box what you want. So 0 0.5, press the return key on the keyboard, and now we've got this very thin black stroke line around it. If I want to change the color of the stroke line, I just go to border frame or color, click on the black box, I can just choose white, or if I'm on Mac and I can actually take a swatch of any color that I want, unfortunately you can't do that on PC. So now we've got a white stroke line around it. So I want to apply this to all the rest of these images. I can do it manually, or I can just simply select the image that's correct with the correct border around it, go over to here, and the third one down says apply the border, selected image, or item to all items on this page. So you'll see now once I've selected that, that they all get exactly the same header border. And just as a by the by, you'll see in some of our digital matted albums that we move the stroke line away from the image to give it like a nice frame feel. The way we do that is just by moving under border controls once the image is selected and it moves the stroke line a distance away from the image itself. So that's how that effect is, um, how we get that effect. So I'm really happy with this page now, but let's say that I've done this, this is my bridal um, prep shot and I want to use this page again in the future. So I'm going to save it as a template. So to do that, we go down to Templates. Underneath the Templates button, there's the style. There's all these different styles. We go down to Personal at the bottom, and you'll see that I've started to create some personal templates. By the word Templates, we get this little plus button. I click on the plus button, save it as a double page spread, and I give it a name. Or whatever, however you could, would name it. I would probably name this maybe a Bridal Prep Shop, four uprights, one landscape. Press OK, and you'll see it appear down here now at the bottom. So here it is. So this means in the next album or a week or a year, a month's time, I come to do the Bridal Prep Shop, I just go to my personalised templates, and we're all ready to go. We just simply now drag and drop the image that we do want um, into the apertures. But let's say, for example, um, in this case, that here we had a landscape, but in uh, in this particular uh, shot that we've done, we wanted this to be upright. But because this is now a template, I cannot move it. But if we hit the little padlock button or right click and unlock, we can now change the aspect ratio of the aperture without damaging the aspect ratio of the image. So it redraws the image. And then I just stick it back in the center again. I can redraw it. Uh, re uh, save it as a new template if I wanted to. This, you'll notice that this image here was in colour and now it's in black and white and that's because the changes that we made to the original page, the software has remembered that the uh, effects are to the template and not to the images. So all of these are still affectable or you can change them. So if I select the background image now, uh, we knew that originally this started out as a colour image so we can put the colour back in and also we can still play around with the uh, opacity of the image. So that's just to get you going and, and that's how you kind of uh, can create very easily a, a beautiful spread uh, and very simple. Just a couple of last tips and tricks. If you want to have a closer look at an image to see if it's in focus, if you hit the space bar on the keyboard, you see that you get a, a bigger image. It's quite a, kind of quite a quick view, which you do get with a lot, lot of software um, applications that you're able to do that. Okay, thank you.